Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Hardware Engineering. You guys have supported the first episode so well, thank you so much for this, we're gonna dive right into the next one. But we are actually gonna revisit one of the puzzles we've already done in the first episode, but this time we're gonna approach it differently. So you guys have given me so awesome tips. One of which was to actually use mathematics a little bit more. Usually when I do logic, I just look at it logic-wise. But at certain points, you just have to go with mathematics. And I'm gonna show you an example for this with the bus door opening mechanism. So, if you don't remember, what we had to do here is construct the logic for an opening and information mechanism for the door. So, the bus driver or the passenger or the safety feature can open the door. However, only the safety feature can open the door if the door is not blocked. If the door is blocked and the passenger or the bus driver tries to open them, it doesn't work. And additionally, if the passenger or the safety feature manages to open the door, the bus driver gets informed. Now, you can already see I prepared a little area right here in order to do the calculations. We have A as a driver input, B as a passenger input, C as a safety input, and D is the door blocked input. Now, we just have to go through all of the possibilities and basically write down the on and off states of each individual component. In order to do this, I'm just going to define A as an on state and A not as an off state. Usually would, you would just have a line above it, but this is uh, way more convenient to write for me on the computer. So we're just going to do it like that. Now, when does the door open? I'm going to use the O variable to define that and we just have to go through all the possibilities. Now, the first possibility is if the bus driver right here is opening the door. So that means A b not, c not, d not, where d not is of course the door isn't blocked. So that is the first possibility. The second possibility is the driver opens the door. So a not, b, c not, d not. And then the third possibility is the safety feature. So A not, B not, C and D not. However, D doesn't matter in this case. If C is opening the door, it doesn't matter what D is. So we can just leave this out. What is the fourth possibility a combination between A, B and C? So we could, for instance, have A, B, C not, D not. That would open the door, right? Then maybe A, B not, C would also open the door. Then A not, B, C would also open the door. And of course, A, B, C also opens the door. So here we have all of the possibilities. Now, while doing this with a simple thing like this, you can already eliminate stuff in the process. But I basically want to show you how you can deal with these functions or equations. And also be aware, this is not really a plus sign. What this means is is or. And in between the letters we have an AND. So basically these guys are connected together with an AND gate while two of these guys are connected together with an OR gate. However, these are way too many conditions to put in a, a proper circuit so we are gonna tune it down a little bit or actually simplify it. And if you want to know much more in detail about that you should look up Boolean simplification. Anyways, let's do it. Let's freaking do it. So the first thing we want to do is basically spot stuff that is repeating itself. For instance, we have a lot of A's and A nots. Now, one rule of simplification is that you can actually eliminate an A not versus an A by just taking the A over to the next position. So, for instance, we would have that right here and the A not we can delete this one. So, we basically took those two guys and eliminated the A not. This can be proven through mathematical means. But basically, you're allowed to eliminate it in these cases where it's so simple, just multiplication and addition. However, let's try to skip a bunch of steps. In this case, I mean, we can do it. We can eliminate all A nots just using this first A. So there is one more A not that we can eliminate. Then we're gonna do the same thing with this C right here. So if we add a plus C right here, we basically took this down now and we can eliminate this C 
knot and this C knot. We can also eliminate this bad boy. Now let's grab this B, which is actually in the same calculation as this C. So I'm just gonna write BC here and we can eliminate this B knot and we can eliminate this guy and this guy. Now usually of course I would do this right when I write this calculation here but I just wanted you to see how easy it is to actually simplify also large sums of products. So basically now that you know how you would do it in written form we're just gonna do it in computer form and that is by eliminating stuff right off the bat. For instance I mean we have a B right here we also have an A and we have a C so we can basically get rid of all the knots that contain these letters. So B and C can go right there we have C that can go here and also the A. Then we have an A and B that can go and we have a C right there, a B right here and an A right there. You can see this is very easy. Now look at that, this is very important. This C is alone and if you remember in between the plus signs it's basically multiplication that is happening or AND gates. So if C all alone is already a condition for opening the door then ABC is a condition too and B and C is a condition too and A and C is a condition too because the C alone already activates it. That means everything containing C we can just take out of the equation and now we are left with a much easier one however it's not done yet you can see this right here is also a good example we have BD not alone but we also have BD not together with A but that doesn't matter if BD not already activates the opening feature then ABD not will too so we can get rid of that too and there we go we have the final equation that we cannot simplify anymore I think Maybe we could. We could, for instance, take the D out, but I mean, we're still left with the C there. So it doesn't matter. I'm just going to leave it at that. The next thing we want to think through, and that's going to be much easier, is when does the driver get informed? And that is, of course, the case whenever the door opens, when the safety feature or the passenger did it. So we can basically say uh, either the passenger opens the door while the door is not blocked or the uh, safety feature opens the door. And what you can also see is that this is basically happening twice here. That means we can use the same mechanisms in order to do this. Okay guys, so let's finally do the circuits. Uh, we want to start with AD not or should we start with BD not? Maybe let's first do the AND gates. We're gonna need an AND gate for this guy and this guy. So two AND gates right off the bat. Let's grab one, two. So maybe we hook these up right off the bat. Uh, we want an AND gate for A, not D, and we want an AND gate for B, not D. So I guess what we also need is a NOT gate, which we're gonna place right here. Here. And we're first gonna do A not D. So A goes right here, not D goes right there. If both of these conditions are true, we want to open the door. And then we also want to do the same thing for B not D. So we should do that. And last but not least, we need an AND gate right here. Here, I guess we can hook this right up and we should do... Oh man, this is not a good cable. <laughs> Let's get rid of that. We are gonna do this straight. Yeah, just like that. So basically this is a BD plus C combined. Oh no, no, no. This shouldn't be an AND gate. This should be our OR gate here because either C or BD not is going to activate this which is our information mechanism and this is our door opening mechanism. Oh, hold the phone. We still need another OR gate. Can we have one more, please? Of course, one should be going to open the door right away, which is the safety feature here, right? There we go. So safety feature is opening the door and also informing the bus driver. Yes, and then here we have the B not D, which is in forming but not yet opening. Oh man, this is sometimes so confusing. So right here we need an OR gate that is connected with this guy and this guy. 
and I lost my output. There we go. We want to plot that right there. Great. Okay. So now we really understand this circuit mathematically and I've built it according to the mathematical formula we had right here. So now we should be able to test this and it should also be working theoretically. I mean, I don't necessarily understand it logic wise because I haven't thought through all the connections. I've just build it straight from the mathematical formula. There we go, there we go, yes, it's looking good. We passed the ninth test, 10 and 11, there we go, we actually succeeded. So let's continue with the addition now. Okay, the question is, do we need to do this mathematically? I don't know, maybe yes. I mean, it's a good example to start with easy stuff and then we can apply the mathematics uh, on the harder stuff as well. So if we look at this truth table right here, we can see that the sum is only active if either A or B is active, but not if both are active. So we already know that is an XOR gate, right? It checks if the inputs are on a different state and if they are, it will give out an output. Then the carry is just as easy. I don't think we need to do this mathematically. The carry is simply on if both of these signals are the same. No, not the same, but if they are on. So maybe just for shakes and giggles, we're still gonna write that down. So that basically means if A not and B, then we have a sum. And also if A and B not, then we have a sum. And we can see if those guys are inverted, that basically means an XOR gate. Okay, then let's take care of the carry, which is basically if A, B. And that is a simple AND gate, right? Okay, let's do this. We have input A, input B. We, oh, 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 there we go. We have output and the carry. Okay, we're gonna need an X or gate and we're gonna need an AND gate. And we have to hook them both up. So I guess what we could do is something more or less elegant that and can we do a cross over here? That might actually not work out. It's also not overviewish. So maybe we can do this and that. It's not the best circuit anyways, but we're gonna leave this scenario soon anyways. So we have hooked up both of our gates. Uh, if we remember the XOR gate right here was meant for the sum. So we should hook up the sum and the carry on the other side. Okay, let's start the scenario. Should be good, should be good. Yes, yes, yes. One more and we also successfully completed this one. Yuri hui. Let's go ahead and continue with the full edition. Here starts the real challenge. Now we have 20 parts at our disposal and we also have an unlocked half adder. So we don't necessarily have to build an adder ourselves anymore. Let's actually see, uh, where is that? Half adder. Oh, we only have one at our disposal. You can see it has an A and B input and also a sum output and a carry output. Okay, I'm just gonna leave this up here for the time being because we only have one half adder and we are actually gonna need two half adders in order to make a full adder. Now, let's see, two half adders should result in a full adder. I'm gonna need an XOR gate and an AND gate in order to make the second adder, just like we did before, the second half adder. And then I'm gonna need an OR gate for the output because we're gonna have several, oh man. Oh, geez, geez. Let's actually have a look at the truth table. Okay, it's already larger. Let's see, we're gonna need our inputs first of all. We have input A, input B and carry in, good. Then we have the sum output and the carry out output. So what should happen right here is pretty clear. Uh, first of all, we just need to have this go into there. Okay, A and B is covered. Then the carry out, let's see, uh, the sum actually goes into the next XOR gate. Okay, I want to place this a little bit further up, but the sum is definitely gonna hook up right here. However, as a second input, we also have this carry in. So I'm just gonna have it on this side today. There we go. The carry in, however, is also gonna input into this AND gate, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we also have an OR gate that is gonna be hooked up to this and this. 
I just bring this over. So the carry out of the first half adder goes into the ore gate that is just before the next carry out. So this will then just continue in a loop if you just keep going with that. I don't know, we, we shall see. And I think this guy I can hook up right here. Now we just have to take care of this end gate. The end gate is going to be activated by the sum right here and also by this guy. I do believe so. At least isn't that approximately what we what we have mathematically speaking? I'm not sure with the full adder, but I, I believe so. Let's just test it out. So the first three steps are already good. The first uh, five possibilities even, it's looking good, I have to say. So yeah, I do like the mathematical approach. It does get a little bit easier on the logic thinking in my brain. Great. Woo. Okay. So the next thing would be to continue with numbers. And we actually unlocked stuff. For instance, we unlocked the full adder and I have no idea what this component is, but this guy must be the full adder. So now we don't have to build all the circuitry for every full adder, we actually get full adders. Maybe I'm gonna show you that before we wrap up the episode. So yeah, we are dealing with numbers now, but you can see we have 4-bit inputs now and we also have access to stuff like, let's see, half adder, full adder. Look at this shebang. We have a 4-bit half adder. Holy Moses. Let's actually do this very simple scenario. I don't think we need a lot. It's just to exemplify the features here. So we're gonna take this full adder, this 4-bit adder, and we're gonna need these two components. There we go. Let's bring this down a little bit. We're gonna hook up the first 4-bit input to the 4-bits we have right here. Here. Yes, yes, yes. You can see where this is going, guys. I mean, it gets just better and better and more complex. Then we have our output, the sum, which we can just plot right here. And we have the carry out, which we are gonna place right there. Uh, let's actually put it a little bit further up, just for the looks. Look at that beautiful circuit. And I believe that it's just a tutorial scenario here, just to show you that these modules, you don't have to do the circuitry every time. And there we go. Succeeded with only three stars. So there is possibly a better solution. Anyways, guys, we are going to return back to the menu. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to leave down your comments and likes. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye bye.